discussion okay so um today's actually you you, you are the one who set the, the yeah. topic um so but yeah. we agreed on it yeah so oh, you oh, know oh, yeah, oh, no, oh, sorry sorry, sorry. Okay. Right, so you say it right okay, okay. Uh, okay. Bismillah in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious, all praises, glory and gratitude belong to him. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship uh, in truth and reality except, the Prophet, uh, except Allah. And the Prophet Sallam is his final messenger. Uh, we're here to discuss, because um, we had a lot of discussions about a variety of other stuff. There's a lot of people in the park who um, talk about Prophet Muhammad in the Bible. They talk about a variety of other stuff. But the core fundamental thing that I think we all should go to is not talk about the leaves, the branches, but let's go to the root of the tree. Because if the root of the tree is rotten, then everything that it bears is rotten. So therefore, this goes the same with the Quran. Same criteria goes with the Quran, the same criteria goes with the Bible. Today we're gonna, my aim is inshallah, to prove the Quran is the word of God and to disprove that the Bible uh, is the word of God. So that's my premise, that, that's what I'm going to do inshallah. And uh, I think Paperboy, which he wants to be referred to as, I asked him if, if I could mention, talk to him, uh, mention by his name. He said he prefers Paperboy, so just to let you guys know, I'm not trying to be sarcastic here or mock his name. So that's the topic inshallah. I'm going to start off personally, personally, I don't know whoever this stuff, if you want to start or I can start, that's not a problem. But um, do we agree that that's, the, that's what we're going to discuss? Yeah, that's the topic. Okay. Okay. Right. So do you want to start first? Um, I'm looking for some verses. Is okay, yeah? so uh, I'd just like to thank the Most High the Father. I uh, pray that the Holy Spirit will be descend upon us, uh, that the Holy Spirit will just help me to give a good uh, talk, be able to defend the faith with uh, vigor and allow people to understand the words that I uh, speak. Um, so as, we, as um, Ali Dawa said, today's discussion is about this scripture, the preservation of the scripture, the reliability of the scripture and the accuracy of the scripture. Because obviously as believers, uh, we all want to follow the, uh, you know, the one true God. And we believe that we have, the, the scripture is important for this. So therefore we then have to establish a, tri a criteria of where and how we can identify which scripture is the most reliable. So we'll use a variety of methods such as, um, well, miracles within the, or miracles within the, uh, the scriptures, historical accuracy, how it's been preserved. Um, and I think as the discussion will go on, I'll be able to present the um, preservation of the scripture through the Christian faith, through the Christian church, how the church gave rise to the scripture and not the scripture gave rise to the church. So we also ha automatically have a tradition here of um, that goes all the way back to the apostles of Christ all the way kind of to the modern day. So, um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or, okay. So, um, I think I'll start with some questions on the Quran, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah, so I think, when because when we look at uh, the preservation of the Quran, Muslims will say that um, it, you've got the oral tradition um, that has kept the Quran preserved but I think many would you say that the Quran has been preserved letter for letter dot for dot what is your kind of understanding of the preservation it's, 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 of the Quran it has been preserved um, but the, 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 the what they call it the haraka the for example the you know, um, Diacritical marks. The, the diacritical marks, those were uh, added later okay. because for people to understand better. Okay. But what was added doesn't change from what it was. Okay. It's just to further help those who are new to the religion okay. to understand better. So, so if those dots were not there, yeah. there's still people who can read it. But so, it's just there for people to okay. read it properly. So then just to understand your, get an understanding of your understanding of preservation, yeah. how would you define the Quran being preserved. What, what, okay. as a Muslim, so, so, how would you describe okay, that so, to the audience? Okay, um, I can address it as a Muslim, or actually, I can go or, to the actual definition. Yeah, or either or, because okay, like, your for example, yeah. anything that it hasn't been altered okay. in any way, shape, or form has not been changed, and this goes that any kind of men, mankind, okay. has not altered with it, okay. has not changed it, um, has not misplaced words. Um, I, w I would say, in a nutshell, it's any kind of and it's, it's free from any kind of um, hand of a man being like touched it, 
um, change it in certain ways, change the meaning, etc. I would say it, hasn't, it should not be distorted in any way, shape or form. Okay. That's, that's how the uh, personally define it. So, um, so just going back to Christianity just for a brief second. Mm -hmm. So we know after the, um, after the death and resurrection of Christ that there were the apostles and they were sent out by Christ. And then we also have our early church tradition. So we have what we call the church fathers. So one of the first bishops of um, the Christian church was Clement of Rome. And he lived in 35 AD to, to 100 AD. And what he said is, the apostles have preached the gospel to us from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ from God. Christ therein was sent forth by God and the apostles by Christ. Both these appointments then were made in an orderly way according to the will of God. Having therefore received their orders and being fully assured by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and established the word of God with the full assurance of the Holy Ghost, they went forth and proclaimed, proclaiming that the kingdom of God was at hand. And thus, through preaching through countries and cities, they appointed the first fruits of their labours, having first proved them by spirit to be bishops and deacons of those who should afterwards believe nor was there this any new thing since indeed many ages before it was written concerning bishops and deacons for thus saith the scripture in a certain place i will appoint their bishops in righteousness and their deacons in faith so basically what this is showing is the very foundations of the christian faith that the church started before the bible so therefore the we had the church and then the scriptures were written as Christianity was sp spreading. So sometimes there's a misconception that Christian faith is built on the scriptures itself. It's not. It's built on a tr tradition that came before it. So this uh, we have what we call an apostolic tr uh, tradition where bishops were appointed after bishops and the knowledge that they had was passed down. So this would classify as an oral tradition as well. So this is why Christians will know that the Gospels were accurate because the church never disputed them or what was in it or the account of what happened because as Christian, Christianity grew, you had the church to confirm what was being developed. But then I think when we look at the um, advent of Islam, there was a difference where Muhammad received revelation and then uh, different people had different revelations and the Quran was compiled and then that kind of gave more rise different, to different people had different revelations as in uh, well, may know different verses not everyone memorised the, the Quran as a whole yeah, altogether no, so was, different there people was, no, there, was, there was people who memorised the whole, uh, the whole of the Quran okay um, yeah. so um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that because well, I can I can I'll let you respond I'll carry, I'll carry on okay so my, my first um, Thing I'd like to address in terms of the Quran is do you know what the uh, first like the oldest manuscript that uh, no. you have in uh, terms of this there's, there's there's a few but I don't I don't is it an Osmanic Osmani manuscript I think that's uh, the earliest okay that's earliest one. there's a few there's one in Turkey okay there's one in Egypt the top copy Husseini. top copy yeah there's one in Egypt uh, yeah there's a few Hussein in Egypt yeah, okay few, yeah. from the first yeah. So first of all, I'd like to just show the, that the Quran hasn't been properly preserved because the oldest Quran is actually the Egyptian copy, which is 1924. Because this is just a little diagram. So this, these are all the manuscripts of the Quran. And as we can see in the red, shows the percentage of the preservation of the Quran. So all together, if you added them all together, it would only make up about 90% of the Quran you have today. So therefore this brings up an initial problem is that we with Christianity we have the Codex Vernaticus which dates to the early 4th century around 300 AD which is the first full copy of the, uh, the, the Bible so we can compare its transmission from then to how it is now but with Muslims they cannot do this because all the manuscripts are incomplete so we cannot look at a, a complete manuscript and compare it from then to there so this, this therefore leads to the first question is how do we then know that the Quran has been fully preserved because if we go to the uh, Sana manuscript which is one of the earliest and that dates to around 671 some say around uh, 630 and that's it I don't know if let me see that's the Sana man manuscript right so what they notice is that when they um, it was written on leather and what uh, modern-day um, scientists. scientists have done 
they noticed that there was an underlying text to it. So what usually happened is if there was a mistake, they would wash away the text and rewrite it. So uh, there was a research by Dr. Benham Segahi and Mushin Guzari. And what they found is that there were many uh, errors in, in between the Uthmanic uh, top copy, which was you were talking about, and or even the present day Quran and the standard manuscript. And I'll give you an example. In Surah 974, it says, but if they turn away, Allah will punish them with a painful punishment in this world and in the hereafter. So you can see in the red. And on the Sana version, it says, but if they turn away, Allah will punish them in this world. So the words that are missing are, and the hereafter, and with a painful punishment so there's a very which an, which words are missing? an early dis, dis, discrepancy so anyway, Allah will punish them yeah in this world you're saying that with a painful punishment yeah the red bits and here after uh, uh, yeah okay. so my question first question to you Ali would be in terms of the eternal tablet in heaven which words would be on the eternal tablet okay so okay firstly what we want to do is inshallah we're going to talk about this even though it's kind of a bit off topic but we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll address it that's not that's not a problem yeah okay so now firstly <laughs> the Quran was revealed in oral transmission yeah this is how the Quran came down yeah this is the remembrance the dhikr this is how it was come down and it's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve it so oral transmission was something that they relied on the written format which was written on leather bones other kind other kind of materials is secondary source to us yeah the primary source was revelation yeah and this was revealed so for example when um, they were at the battle of Yamama a lot of companions who memorized the Quran the entirety of the Quran were killed this is when Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu, uh, Umar ibn Khattab uh, radiallahu an, both of them came together to say look a lot of companions have died so we need to preserve it so obviously Abu Bakr radiallahu an, said that look the Prophet never did, did it so I don't want to fall into that so he said no we should do it and then obviously he came and said you know what yep if the prophet was alive he would have done that yeah okay so what they did is they had a criteria yeah anyone and this is something christians use but they misuse it they say anyone that brings the verses there was specifically they, they say there was one companion who came and he was the only one that had this only verse and the christians say look there was only one man who only had this specific verse but what they misunderstand is the following that there was a strict criteria the criteria wasn't anybody that knows the Quran verse because there was hundreds and thousands of companions who knew the Quran by heart you had blind people um, I've, I've, I've tried to find his name a blind scribe uh, Zayd ibn Thabit was writing down verse on bones for the messenger and a blind man a blind man, man called Amr bin Umm Maktoum he was a blind man who, who memorized the, uh, the Quran yeah the criteria was the following they're gonna compile it so they so they don't make any errors they said anybody that comes has to have two witnesses that he took the revelation, he heard the revelation from the Prophet. So they only find, found one man, one man, a lot of people knew the verses, but they only found one man who had two witnesses that saw him taking it from the Prophet. That's how strict they were. But then this... So, so coming back to this now, if we had a problem with the Quran's transmission, we would have the same problem what our Christian friends have fell into today which is that you have books which I'm going to come into which you have um, let me just find it for you if you give me a second you have Bibles that are let me just get it because I don't want to reference you in the wrong way give me a second so let me just find this because it's important so in, in a nutshell I'm going to find this for you they have books that have, they have 86 books 76 books 73 books you follow the King James? Yeah. 66 books yeah now if we had this problem what uh, paperboy is referring to we would have lived it and see it today one thing that's different with Muslims and the Christians and the Jews is the following we don't have a difference with the doctrine we believe Allah is one all the sects you can bring all the sects together none of them will say no but I believe Allah is a part of this or that no no all of them will agree that all of them will agree the Prophet is his final messenger and all of them will agree that the Quran is from Allah and he hasn't been changed now, if the Quran has been changed, today we would have had the same problem our Christian friends have fell into of 
Nope, the Quran has 112 chapters. He will say, no, 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 my Quran has 114 chapters. He will come and say, no, my one has 99 chapters. Not a single Muslim you will see ever, ever. Have you ever come across any debate between two Muslims saying, hold on a second, this Quran I have is different to your Quran? Never. Let me tell you guys why. Because the Quran is memorized, and this is an evidence. Every Ramadan will go through this, yeah? Is how many Muslims are here? Yeah, so, Muslims, yeah alhamdulillah, good. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna recite, yeah? Correct me, yeah? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen No, should we start? Uh, Awudu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Bismillahi Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nastain Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Sorry Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Iyaka Nabudu wa Maliki Yawmiddin Maliki Yawmiddin Ghayri Al-Makhtubi Alayhi Okay So you see what's happening here is the following, yeah? Is that this is the trans uh, the transmission the, the, uh, the thing that we have The system that we even have in place which cuts, deters this from happening. And Allah has taken, Allah has promised and said, we have sent this revelation and it's upon us to preserve it. So if Paperboy can prove that this hasn't happened, then he has to bring us Muslim scholars or anybody who has differed on this point and said, you know what, hold on a second. We have this extra Quran or this verse, this verse doesn't belong here or it's been taken out. Then I will say, Paperboy, you have a point. You've disproved Allah's statement, which Allah says, we have sent down the dhikr and it is upon us to preserve it. If we all have memorized the timetable by heart, let me give you guys an example. All of us. If I say three times three is nine, is that correct? Twelve times twelve is 144. Mashallah, subhanAllah, how knowledgeable I am. Um, ten times ten is 524. So you see what happens is that because everyone has memorized it and it's been transmitted and we actually have chains of transmission, this is something you will not see in any oral transmission. I'll just show you um, over here. We have chains of transmission that go back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. We have books of the companions. We know who he is, who his father was, yani even to like what he ate, how he walked. Yeah. So because of this, we have this transmission. That's why today when the Imam is reciting, when he makes a single error, the person behind him corrects him automatically, just like you did with me. Yeah. Coming back to the manuscripts. Let's go back to the manuscripts. So for example, um, let me go to one second, sorry about that. Just give me one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Can I just bring up a point that you, 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 you can, made? Can so, I, I just want to mention this point. So, Ali Dawa said, when they were constructing the Quran, the collection was very precise, that you needed two witnesses. But this automatically brings a problem. And what's the problem? Because Muslims will sell you, bring, uh, the challenge of the Quran is to, that no one can replicate the Quran. So why would you need two witnesses? Imagine if, I had a, if I'm a goldsmith and I collect gold and someone brings me a fake bar of gold. I do not need to tell them, bring me two witnesses to tell me where you got this gold for. I can inspect the gold for the quality that it is. So therefore, if someone was able to recite the Quran in its linguistic eloquence, you would therefore not need someone to verify it because if you need a second witness there that means someone else could bring a fake verse so therefore if there's a possibility of someone brings a fake verse therefore it refutes your own criteria because just the eloquence of the verse itself should be evidence of itself so therefore we now have to ask ourselves why would you need two witnesses if you cannot replicate the Quran that's good that's, that's, that's a very good question that he's asked me I have to give that to him but it shows that he's misunderstood my statement when you have two witnesses, it's not because what is being brought is in doubt, but it's what's in doubt is that did he hear it from the Prophet? So, for example, this is what I was saying. There was many companions that knew the Quran by heart, knew it by heart, knew passages, all of it by heart. And there was some coming, coming and saying, look, this verse that you've got missing, I know it. They will come to him and say, do you have two witnesses that saw you take it from the Prophet? We know you, the, the, what you're reciting to us, we know it's the part of the Quran. This is where maybe people you've misunderstood. They know it's from the Quran, they're not doubting what's been recited. So, so if someone didn't doubting, have two witnesses, would no, they no, no, accept no. the verse? No, no, let me tell you something. They, this is, this is proving how strong the criteria is that this is the reason why we have what we have today that I'm being corrected when I'm reciting wrong. They're saying, there was people who came and said, the missing verse that you have, I know it. Okay. They said, okay, what is it? Recite it. Okay, we know that ourselves as well. We don't, it's like, imagine if I said, we have the timetable, but nine times nine equals 81 is missing. You know nine times nine equals 81. I know that. However, 
what we're trying to get is two witnesses from that specific person that did you hear it from the prophet so the criteria is so strict that we know you have it, we don't have a doubt that you have it. The point is, did you have two witnesses that took from the Prophet? No, you're not understanding it. Go, we want somebody with two witnesses who saw you hearing it from the Prophet. Do you get it? So it makes my claim stronger because the criteria that's been set up but is, then it would be, but you understand then it, it? But then it would be a pointless criteria. Again, that's my original why, why, point. Why would it be pointless? Because if you recite something that's eloquent, it doesn't matter even if you heard it from someone else, because you cannot replicate the Quran, yeah. you know it's authentic. That the Quran they, authenticates they, they, they itself. They know that. No, okay, so you're, therefore, you're, you're missing the point. yeah. So therefore, yeah. you're saying if they know it, it's a it's like a futile rubber stamping process. So therefore, it doesn't make the process any more stringent than the Quran itself, it, 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 because it, it, it Allah said you cannot replicate the Quran. Now imagine this here: if we said the nine times the, 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 the sum of nine times nine equals eighty-one is missing. And you can say, okay, this might be prophetic, but the prophetic, it being prophetic shows mm -hmm. how strict, how, how much they love the Quran that they didn't want anyone coming and messing around with it, yeah? If, they, if I said, have you heard, do you have witnesses that you took this from Einstein? But then how could you mess around with no, it if it's the divine word no, 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 of God no, exactly. that is eloquent? What, that's what I'm saying, it proves it. If I said, I need two witnesses that you, even though we know 99 equals 81, but just to show how strict we are, did you take that from Einstein? If so, did you have two witnesses that saw you take from Einstein? Yeah? Because the person that we're relying back onto is the Prophet peace be upon him. And this is how strict they are. What I'm trying to show you is the criteria they have. The bar is so high, you're even, I, I don't doubt you, you're saying, Ali, come on, man, that sounds a bit. And I'm like, but, but the bar the would be the criteria had. itself because that's what I'm saying. If the Quran says, produce a surah, a surah like or this. verse or yes. like this, yes. therefore that's the criteria itself. So therefore, yeah. someone, if they recite something on that same level yeah. you do not need two witnesses because it authenticates itself with its eloquence but, but the, the, so the therefore doubt it's just here, a rubber stamping the tool that here doesn't is, is add not, any value the doubt the, the issue here is not what's being recited it's about who heard it from the prophet so when they do a collection they can't come and say abdul ibn muttalib or whoever he no 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 who are you where did you come from are you a muslim we don't who are you we but don't what know. difference would that make no, to the collection but of the this Quran? is what it is the issue here is to you, what is seemed a bit like a bit petty was the level, the bar, it was so high, raised so high, that this is the condition that they came with. That's the reason why I'm saying to you, one of my claims why the Bible is not the word of God and why we're talking about this is because, and this is, by the way, we, we agreed on this, by the way, I forgot to mention it. If I prove the Bible is not the word of God, Paper Boy, from what I remember, said that he will leave Christianity or will re question his faith. And I said the same to him. I said, if you prove that the Quran is not the word of God, I will leave Islam. I will reclaim. I will go on holiday. I'll, I'll zone out. You won't hear from me anymore. Not my. I'll give my YouTube channel to somebody else. I will zone out. Yeah. And I'm telling you this. I'm giving this my word. Yeah. This was our criteria. So the reason why we're talking about the Bible and the Quran is because I get everything that I know about the Prophet peace be upon him, Allah, everything from the Quran. If Paperboy disproves me wrong, everything that I believe then falls on the floor. The same goes with Paperboy. Jesus dying for your sins. Jesus is God. He's a part of the Trinity. Everything that you get from the Bible, you have to say bye bye because the sources that is coming from is corrupted. So, my question to you is the following. Let me just open something for you. Is the following. If the Bible is the word of God, yeah, it should not have no contradictions. It should have no errors. Yes? It should have no errors. It should not have passages taken out, put in, books taken out, books, books added in. If you can show that the Quran has suffered what the Bible has suffered, I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prove it, you need to disprove to me, number one, that the Bible hasn't been changed. Yeah? If you prove that to me, then I have to be on the back foot and try to prove that wrong. If you cannot prove that to me, then it shows that the Bible is in dispute. The Quran sets a challenge. The Quran says, look, this is from your Lord. If you doubt it, bring a chapter like it. Yeah? If you are truthful, bring the Tell the truth. Yeah? So my claim is this to Paperboy. And once again, I'm referring to him because this is what he wants to be called by. I don't want to seem like I'm mocking him. Yeah? Because we had a nice discussion. To be honest, he's the first Christian. Oh, one of the first Christians that actually in Sujur, I pray for him, yeah? I believe he's a sincere guy. He has his disputes and discussions with other people. But I personally pray for him and I'm sure he prays for me as well, yeah? So we're having a nice discussion, people boy. I would like you to tell me, is the Bible the word of God? Now, in terms of what we understand as the word of God, because Muslims, uh, well, some may have the incorrect viewing of what, understanding of what the word of God means. So the word of God, the Bible says that the words of the scripture are God-breathed. So that, that means that they're inspired. 
So therefore we believe that the Holy Spirit can inspire someone to do something. So now some people will not understand what, well, or they'll ask the question, what does inspired mean? So inspired doesn't necessarily mean that the Holy Spirit will speak to them and they'll recite something verbatim. It means, for example, the Holy Spirit can say to you, Ali Dawa, go to this place and write what you see. So therefore you're entrusted to write what you see. So, th so therefore it, it may not be word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. For example, um, like when we have the four gospels, we get four different eyewitness accounts. So sometimes people will remember different things. Something will stick out to them that doesn't stick to someone else. So someone will say, oh look, one person in one book says one thing and another says another thing. That's a contradiction. No, it's what you generally get with an eyewitness testimony that people will observe different things. So for example, Matthew was a tax collector. So what you notice is in his writings, also he writ for the Jewish people. So his writings will reflect more of a Jewish understanding of events that take place or things that only a uh, tax collector would notice you know yeah. it's like if I have these trainers yes. and I see someone else with it I'm going to be like that person had had my trainers where mm. someone else doesn't really care about the trainers he won't write about it yes. so that's why we have to be careful in terms of what we call contradictions but some people will say because some details are left out mm. that it's a contradiction no that's why we take the Gospels as a whole yeah. and they complement each other so, would so you say, would you say that whatever's um, revealed. Yes. So if God has inspired the writer, yes. the Holy Spirit, which is God, yes. who is sent by God, is if he's inspiring the writer, yes. can the writer make a mistake? If he's making that mistake, is that from God or himself? Well, again, so it depends on what you would call the mistake, and you'd have to bring some sort of evidence of a mistake. So John and chapter 7, uh, John chapter 7 53 to Mark 8 11. So for example that specific chapter you will not find it in any of the new Bibles except in the King James Version. Yes. So somebody will come and ask and say hold on a second what was taken out was what was written was that inspired by God and the Word of God if so why was it taken out and why the ones who follow the King James Version of it read the King James Version have said no this is the word of God, but the others have said, no, this is not the word of God. That's one example that I'll give. So how do we differentiate yes. what is the word of God? Was it the word of God and then it got, mankind made a mistake, the one who's writing it, but somebody added in there. Who who made this mistake? Was it God, the Holy Spirit or the man who's who? who, who? Now, first of all, uh, when he refers to the book of John. So even let's say we first, if we took that passage for argument's sake out, yes. it does not change the what our core doctrines is okay. because um, let me just uh, get get you a, a quote because most scholars because some people have different opinions but stuff like that was written by um, yeah. by the early church fathers yeah. because what some of the um, new like some of the bibles for, for example the NIV yeah. what they do they will go by the manuscripts mm -hmm. so they won't necessarily take on board what the church fathers were writing okay. so therefore you'll get things that were written by the church fathers mm. but for an, let's say an academic standard yeah. they'll say because it, we couldn't find it on the oldest manuscripts yeah. therefore we were not included mm. so okay. that's why the, the King James you'll have uh, certain things in there that's on the other, that, okay yes all right find that reference while you find it my, my, my argument is the following yeah I see as this here this is my criteria because I believe all of us we want to go to heaven yes you can talk sure sure yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. You want to go to heaven. So, okay. So now, if you want to go to heaven, would you take any chances? Okay, anything. Little atom, atom. You would say, look, this is my hereafter. If I gave any of you guys a bottle of water with a drop of poison in it, would you drink it? You wouldn't drink it. Why? Because you'll put your body at risk. Yes? What about your soul? Because the question here is this. You will not put your body at risk, but what about what you're giving your soul? If you're giving your soul scripture, the Bible, the Quran, the Vedas, whatever you like it, if what you're giving your soul is the wrong thing, then that's problematic. So therefore, if the Quran, let's suppose the Quran has a passage that has been corrupted. I can't come and say, hold on a second. That doesn't, that doesn't affect the main doctrine of the, 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 the Quran, uh, the, the religion of Islam. That's irrelevant because the point here is this. If there is a problem in the root, this, what that means is that that's problematic. I need to question and say, hold on a second. If this is problematic, what else has been changed that I don't know about? That's the reason why I'm not saying that these errors that we find is affecting your doctrine 
it may or it may not. The problem here is this. If there is one drop of poison in that water, that water is dangerous that we should stay away from. It. So please tell me, I, you can look, you can say it doesn't affect the doctrine, but do you agree, paper boy, that, are you telling me that the Bible has been changed, but it doesn't affect our doctrine? Or are you saying, no, the Bible hasn't been changed and it doesn't affect our doctrine? Well, in terms of the, I believe, the Bible hasn't, it's perfectly preserved. Perfectly well, preserved. it's relatively well preserved. Okay. So there are certain well, scholars well, no. that will look at certain verses uh, and say there were different readings. Yeah. And that, that's why when you look at the NIV, yeah. and as I said, that when they look at some of the earliest manuscripts, yeah. because it wasn't there, mm. they won't include it. And you'll see in the footnotes, it'll say it's not included in the earliest manuscripts. But then you'll see the church fathers who wrote about it. Yeah. So therefore, it depends on which understanding like which route you want to take do you okay. want to go by the manuscript okay or do you want to go by the church uh, uh, tradition okay okay so are you, are you are you saying that the, the, the word of god the bible is perfectly preserved well in terms of for example let me uh let me sorry, okay. get that quote yeah, get that quote for you because this is very important if you say the bible is perfectly <coughs> preserved and it's the word of god then the, the, i have a few but well, i've got about 15 verses and i've got scripture that have that, that have been taken out so if it's been taken out the question that i need to be asked is what is being taken out is the word of god being taken out is the the word of man being taken out if it's the word of man then it's not the word of god and if it's the word of god it should have not have the word of man inside it so i need you to this tell me clearly so because i don't want to misrepresent you if you believe the bible is the perfect word of god and it's been preserved mm -hmm. then you need to answer the following questions that i have do you believe the word the bible is the actual literal word of god and has been inspired and it hasn't been changed so the bible is the inspired word of god so it will in also include the direct verbatim word of god as well because god spoke to the prophets yes. and they'll write down what they hear yeah so we ha have to understand the literary style of the bible the old testament okay. uh, whilst i was i was still looking for that quote for okay. example you have Dr. Jack Cottrell, he'll say, through the wealth of data uncovered by historical and archaeological research, yes. we are able to measure the Bible's historical accuracy in every case where it claims, in every case where it claims can thus be tested, the Bible proves to be accurate and reliable. So therefore we have like people looking at things where we can research it and finding that the Bible is actually historically accurate. So this is what strengthens the um, the, 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 the information within, within the Bible and, okay. and we also have scholars so even people like Bart Ehrman they will say that there is even if you take into account what some people may see as variants in terms of not being in the earliest manuscript they will say there's no nothing no evidence to support the claim that the Christian core doctrine and the core beliefs have been um, distorted in any way there's no single verse so even if you said the John uh, the, the John 7 uh, 53 onwards yeah. that does not actually affect anything within the uh, core Christian doctrine Christian faith so this is the main thing if we have to find things that affect our central belief no. that is um, so, so, not accurate so, what so, so for example because even though you earlier on for example you said about the um, the collection of the Quran and obviously you said it had two witnesses yes but then we also have a case where there was um, one person who was able to recite a verse yeah. that was was accounted like they, he didn't need two witnesses yeah. so therefore even with the Quran we initially see a sort of uh, kind of ad hoc approach to what is included because Ali Dawa talks about the recitation of the Quran and how <coughs> this has been preserved and obviously I, that's why I went to initially with the manuscripts to show that they are different variants and things missing from the earliest manuscript that are not in the um, the Quran you have today and that Quran dates to 1924 no, no, because I showed you the verse no, no, because no, no. That's in, not, that's in the earliest um, that's, manuscripts that's, we'll, we'll go back no, to no, this, that's, but, not, that's not true but, but, we need, but, we need, but let me just make my yeah. point and I'll go back to it so because he talked about oral, oral, um, oral tradition and we know that Muslims go by the Hafs Quran uh, but what we M people may not know is that there's something strange about Hafs and that is that there's no hadith from him because it would make sense that you know someone who was held in high esteem to recite the Quran would be also have um, 
hadith attributed to him and this is what some of this, the earliest scholars said about the person who was, uh, who was given the preservation of the Quran and this is what they say 